I have been having a lot of fun doing art journal pages with interactive elements. Today I'm going to recreate this art journal page of a nutcracker holding a pair of scissors. There are two interactive elements on this page. First, the scissors, which come out of the scissors sheaf, and it opens and closes. Now, you've seen me make these many times on my videos. These are not hard to make. The nutcracker has a little arm here that moves up and down as he holds the scissors. But what's really fun about this nutcracker is that when you pull on his legs down here at the bottom, his mouth opens and closes just like a nutcracker's. Now I'm thinking that you could put a little Christmas message in there saying, Merry Christmas, if you want it. So this is what we are going to create. Now if you don't want to do a Christmas themed nutcracker and you may be seeing me do more of these you could do a halloween one you could do thanksgiving pilgrims you could just do a boy a girl a dog a kitty cat nutcracker but let's go ahead and get started what we're going to start with first is going over the materials that you're going to need and everything i tell you i made everything on this page from Things I already had in my stash. I did not go out and buy a lot of new things. All of the paper elements were from my scrap papers. The, the body of this nutcracker is a mail, a junk mail envelope. Now I colored it and glued over it and everything. I will not be using a junk mail envelope to make the one that I'm going to create today. But let's just go over the materials list. You will need scissors to cut with and a small pair of embroidery scissors. And I'm hoping all of you have this. If you don't, we could recreate our scissors handle with an oval and just a long piece right here. But it's much easier to put the scissors down on a page and trace around. So a small embroidery scissors. You'll also want some thread, some string, and or embroidery thread. Don't get the thin sewing thread. We want the thread to be a string or a crochet weight of thread. You'll want markers and pencils. Paints are optional, a paintbrush to paint with if you wish, glue, a strong glue, a glue stick, whatever you're comfortable using, tape, scotch tape will work, I like the double sided tape, bling embellishment if you have it, it's optional, any type of bling, this just happens to be what I have on hand, a ruler, optional just kind of get the measurements and then for the base of the page I'm using cardstock and this is fairly fairly uh, strong cardstock you don't need real a really strong weight but because it's going to be it's going to be two sheets so that adds the weight to the page and then raid your painty paper your scrap paper stash whatever you whatever you have on hand christmas paper you want to kind of get christmas colors whatever you like maybe some black on this nutcracker you can see that i used this for his beard right in there i have a little scrap paper embellishment of flowers on the scissors sheaf here this is where the scissors fits in Let's put them in there. They fit in there just like this. So I have some notebook paper that I used as some project. I painted gold on it. I have some scrap jelly printed paper, eight and a half by 11 cardstock, two sheets. And then 
other types of scrappy paper. If you're not doing a Christmas one, you don't have to do a Christmas nutcracker. As I said, you could do you could do an Easter bunny. You could do a pirate. You could do a princess. You could do a boy, a girl, or just a regular nutcracker. Whatever, whatever strikes your fancy. These are very fun to do. Very uh, imaginative. Use your imagination. You can see I've got some Christmas strips here that I I think I was making Christmas cards. This came off of my traveler's journal. Here's a jelly print. Here's a napkin that I stamped. Another jelly print. Scrap paper. Here is a little piece of die cut that was sent to me in Happy Mail. And you can see on this one I used, I used a Christmas, Graphic 45 Christmas tag up here. And on my one that I'm going to do today, I may use this one. So, you get the idea. Here's a Kleenex box. You may want a strip of paper like this. This will work really nice for his arms, maybe. Uh, what else do I have in here? Oh, even fabric. If you have some fabric that you think might be fun to use, you could cut fabric to shape. All of these are going to be pulled from when we create the body of the Nutcracker. Now this was done as a model. I'm going to use this as the base so that you can see it just a little bit better. This was a piece of cardstock that I did jelly printing on. And I just grabbed it when I started to do my model here. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by recreating the scissors. And let me tell you, these are so fun to do and they are so easy you'll be surprised at how fast they work up. So I'm going to move everything off of my desk, and we're going to get started on the scissors first. To create these scissors, I'm going to take these apart to show you how I put them together. I'm going to remove the little brad. You will want your brads. That's right here. I'm going to take it out so that you can see how it was put together. You see, this is very rough. This is just, this is fun. Don't try to be perfect with this until you do 25 of them. Then you might want to start about getting perfect. Now, these scissors was not made from these. So the scissors I'm going to make today will be a little bit smaller. You'll want your brads. You'll want some tape or glue stick or adhesive, whatever you are comfortable using. A sheet of paper uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to create the handles you'll want some scrap paper now I'm going to create my handles out of this Kleenex box and you don't need a lot you do not need a lot I think I'm going to use the side here I'm just going to cut it apart Cut off the flaps. So you want to look for some some type of paper, a heavy paper, cardstock. You could use a lighter paper, but I think a heavier paper works for this. That you want for the handles. That's what this is going to be. Then you want to look for something that might work for the blades. Now I've used mirror paper for the blades. I find that works really nice, but I'm not using it in this particular project because I'm not sure everyone will have mirror paper or foil paper. But what you want to do is take your scissors now, it doesn't matter if you trace on the pattern side or the back side. And take your small embroidery scissors and you're going to trace a handle. Now, I like to trace two handles. So, uh, because you'll see 
that your handles face different directions, a left and a right. So I just generally trace around, just kind of hold your scissors still and trace around them. Don't worry about if you slip or anything because this is the back. And you'll want to trace both of them out. And then you want these separate, so I like to add, I'll cut right down this line, and then I like to add a shank to them, and you may make this longer than intended and then snip it off later. I kind of like to give myself some leeway here. So what if you don't have a small pair of embroidered scissors? Then just wing it. Make an oval. Make an oval like this, draw another oval inside, draw a diagonal line this way, and another oval over here. Just kind of wing it. Don't worry about it being perfect. Draw another diagonal piece that way, and then just draw two pieces down that way. Very simple shapes. They don't have to be perfect. We're just... We're just having fun with our scraps. Okay, let's go ahead and cut these out. And let's paint the back of these really fast. Got a lot of paint on there, but it kind of soaks into this. So now you have your scissors handles, and I painted the back and the front of them. You want to kind of measure how wide the shank is. Like mine is about a fourth of an inch. So set those aside. If you painted them, let them dry. If you use double-sided cardstock, you don't have to paint them. So you don't have to let them dry. <laughs> so now what we want to do is we want to make the blades. The blade of the scissors will get taped to the shank here. So I am going to use this area. So you can use a ruler and mark and draw it. What I'm going to do is use my cutting board here. I'm going to trim away the rooster part. I don't want the rooster on him. I just want the gold. I want the gold part and maybe about five inches estimating five inches let's make it six inches just for fun about six inches long but this will be cut down you won't want your scissors blades to be six inches long but this gives you plenty of room to work now what we're going to do is we're going to cut a strip and I think I'll cut mine on this side. Remember how I told you to measure it to a fourth? Make it just a tiny bit larger than whatever you measured in here, the width. So I measured a fourth. Now they might be a little bit larger, but you can trim that off. So I'm just going to go a teeny bit. Like I'm going to go a fourth is, a fourth is two eighths. I'm going to just go a little bit less than three-eighths. So here you have your blade strip, about three-eighths of an inch wide and six inches long. That's probably about all the measuring that you'll have to do for these. But what you want to do now is I'm going to turn it over and you want to... You want to draw a diagonal line from the upper left to the lower right. Just draw a diagonal line. 
just like that. Now, if you want to be precise, you can use an X-Acto knife, and we're going to cut right along that line. Or you can use your scissors to cut it. Either way. Either way. I'm just going to use my scissors because for this project, I don't care if the lines aren't precise and straight. This is just a fun this is just a fun art journal page. This is not anything that I'm worried about precision on. And I'm not even worried that I don't come to a point here because that, that you'll see it will be trimmed off. We gave you a really long, really long blades for our small scissors. Now, see what I'm saying? We gave you really long blades. Take your scissors handle and just run it down until it seems to fit the blade. Mine fits right about in there. Let's do the other one. Just take your scissors handle. I, I leave myself plenty of room. I, I like to have room to play with it. Just move it down until it seems to fit right in there. Right in there and right in there. So now what I want to do is trim off this excess. Let's just get rid of this right in here. And I'm going to trim off this excess right about in there. So I'm making my blades smaller because I want them to fit my handles. So you take your left one, or for me, I'm taking my left one and I'm just turning it over. It's going to become my right one. And I'm just placing the wrong side to the right side of the blade, just like this. Just like that. It's not hard. It's, it's really intuitive. It's really intuitive. And I'm putting a little bit of spotted glue. And this gives me room to play, too. Just put a little spot of glue right on your... And that's really too much glue. You don't need a whole lot. Just enough to hold the handle. And you're going to glue the handle that you measured out right onto the blade. Right there. There we go. Now, you could shorten up this shank if you want. I'm going to shorten my shank a little because I want more of my blade to show. I'm just going to snip it there. Just like that. So, there is my right-hand side of my scissors. Now, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Just kind of find out where they fit. Now I'm going to have to trim mine down a little bit on this side, I think. You want your blade to fit your scissors. That's all we're doing. We're gluing the blade to the scissors. And I think I'll snip my mine off here. Right there. And get another little spot of glue on there. And we're going to glue it down. There we go. Just like that. Now, we have... Two handles of our scissors. We're going to put them together just like this. So for me it's going to be really convenient. But I need a hole in there. Now you can do this several ways. Mine is awfully small. So I'm going to take. The width of my scissors is really tiny. And I don't think that my hole punch would make a good hole in it. So I'm just going to 
bore a hole through this with my darning needle. Something sharp, your pokey tool. Now I need a tiny bread. I got these at Joann's. They're Miss Sparkle Breads. Found them in the $2 bin. Don't always see them there, but they were there waiting for me. And I think I'll grab a red one. Got a blue one for the others. So you put your bread through one side. It doesn't really matter which side you have put the bread through first. Whichever one you put the bread through first will be the top of the scissors. And then put the bread through the other side. But then you open the back of the bread. And fold the two shanks back. And then you have a scissors that will open and close. Might need to move them back and forth a couple times to work on them, get them working, but they'll open and close like that. You may want your scissors with the long blades. I don't like to leave these blades long and pointy here because they bend and tear. So I like to snip off the blades. I just cut at an angle there. And that gives them a nice, a nice blade. So there we go. There's our scissors. Now you can take your marker, if you wish, and mark around it. I got it kind of got paint in there, kind of decorates it up. But you can just edge it if you want, or you could leave it. Whatever you, whatever you wish. And have fun with it. Some of you work faster than others, so you can just do as you wish there. You'll get ideas as you as you make these of, of what you want to do. And your first one is always going to be harder. Your first one is always going to be harder. But after you make a couple of them, they become easy. And here's the back of mine. Oh. Now next, we're going to make this kind of a scissors sheaf, I'm calling it. But as you can see, this scissors is much smaller than this one. So we're going to cut through. We're just going to kind of eyeball it. And we find a piece of scrap paper. Let's see, what shall I use for that? You have a rectangle cut from the, from the lower left up to the upper right you have just a a triangle of your rep from your rectangle and your scissors will fit right in there like this so we have this part done now you can embellish it we'll get to embellishing it later let's just set these aside we're going to start working on the nutcracker here <laughs> 